Okay, so we're, we're talking about like we, we've got this, this myth piece. So it, you even said it yourself that, that maybe even the genealogies don't give us a linear timeline. So how, how do you work the old earth creation piece into that? We, we have some science data that says the earth is really, really old. Yes. Uh, and then we've got uh, some other data as, as far as the book of Genesis that says this might be allegorical. So how do we, how do we begin to mesh those two pieces yeah. together? So you're now switching over to the scientific question. I would say the answer to the hermeneutical question is that we're dealing here with mytho history that doesn't tell us how old the earth is. So we turn to modern science, to astrophysics and geology and so forth to discover how old the earth is uh, and the universe. And we find that the earth is probably uh, billions of years old and the universe came into being around uh, 13.8 billion years ago in the Big Bang. And so I think those are the dates that um, are given to us by modern science and that I accept. Okay. So um, how do you decide between, if it's kind of this mytho history, mm -hmm. I can imagine somebody coming from a young earth perspective saying, well, then it, then it feels like you get to pick and choose which part is myth and which part is history. And yes. then you might push too far and say, well, Adam and Eve aren't real. The fall isn't real. Um, original sin goes down original, the drain. Right. Original yeah. sin goes down the drain. And so uh, in answering that question, I think this does come back to the hermeneutic of how do we decide between which part is understood to be mythical and which part is understood to be historical? That's, again, a really difficult question to answer. But I think minimally what we want to say is that based upon the genealogical ordering of these narratives, that it is intended to be about historical persons who really did these various things. And then I would say this is confirmed by the teaching of the New Testament, where Paul's disquisitions on Adam in Romans chapter 5, I think burst the bounds of what has been called a literary Adam, that is to say the, the character in Genesis mm -hmm. 2 and 3, and impinges upon or the real historical Adam through whom sin came into the race and affected the human race, and which was then ultimately rectified by Christ. So minimally, I think, we're committed to the historicity of this primordial couple who are at the headwaters of the human race and through whom sin came into the world.